big one. A great game. Um, you know, very physical, tough, and proud of our guys. You know, uh, didn't play great offensively or defensively in the first half, and give UConn credit to that. We defended much better in the second half, and our defense kind of held us in there until our rhythm on offense got there. We knew it was going to be a game where there wasn't going to be a lot of assists, a lot of passing because of their pressure. We were going to have to drive the ball. Didn't finish some of those plays around the basket in the first half, but did a much better job in the second half. A um, couple timely threes by TJ and JB, um, and then obviously timely resurgence of David Collins in the second half. Um, but our defense was really good in the second half, and obviously our rebounding was good. Um, they're good. You know, those guards are hard to guard. They play hard. I know both teams played really hard. Both teams played very physical. And, um, you know, we're a different team because we can play at that intensity level and at that physicality and uh, still make some, some quality plays. So great crowd, great atmosphere, you know, for the first conference game. It was important that we play. We show it wasn't necessarily we didn't have to win, even though obviously I feel a lot better than we did. but. To, to play that hard and with that kind of grit and toughness, I think will resonate with our fans. And hopefully everybody that was there will tell somebody and next game we'll get even more. But it's good. It's a good step for us. And it's just one step in 18 games, uh, but a good one, a good one. Coach, can, nope. you, can you talk about uh, Q? He was 6 of 14 in the first half. Like I said, he held it together. The rest of the team was 3 of 14 in that first half. Yeah, he, you know, I, I thought um, we got some good minutes from some guys in the first half that kept the, you know, kept us within striking distance. And we missed two free throws in the last minute. Or it's a six-point game, you know, and then we have a turnover at the end and or, or maybe it's a six-four point game, which would have been mind-boggling the way they played and the way we played. Um, but Q saved us in that first half, you know, made plays at the rim, made some – you know, tough shots, defended really well. Um, and we, we missed so many shots at the basket. Now, they're great at challenging those shots. But that's an area, you know, we keep talking about, you know, we got to keep getting better. That's an area we need to improve in. We had nine offensive rebounds in the first half and only three second chance points. That's just like a turnover. Because against UConn, if you don't finish at the rim, they're running out on you. And that's, you know, they had eight, nine points in transition off of us missing a shot at the rim. So we got a little better at that in the second half, and that's a key, key area for us to improve. You know, we talk about every day, you know, it doesn't matter, keep getting better. And uh, we've improved, and, and, you know, sometimes you see it within the game. I thought some of the adjustments that my staff suggested and, and we went over with the guys was spot on for us in the second half. You guys doubled your point total from the first half in the second and exploded for a 51 point second half. How does that kind of manifest itself? Coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? You know what it did? We defended better. So now you got some breakouts. Now you got some um, opportunities to score when their defense isn't set. Um, our defense and rebounding always fuels our offense. Plus, we got to the free throw line. We were more physical with our with our drives, um, you know. So when you add all those things up, you maybe not made as you know didn't make every shot, but you got fouled. You made just enough free throws to to, to keep it close, and then you make a couple big threes. Um, you know, we we we're much better offensively than we than we were, and we're getting better. And when we defend well and rebound, then we can get some easy baskets in transition. So uh, credit goes to our guys and their defensive effort to, to kind of catapult us into better offensive opportunities. For uh, for David to respond the way he did in the second half, is that not only resilience, but maybe maturity? Yeah, he's maturity. He's played 13 games as a sophomore now. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's not a lot. He doesn't have a lot of experience. Um, we throw those guys into the fire a little bit, uh, but he, he he struggled. But but the one thing he, I, I I would say the maturity is he's he was really bad offensively last game, but he got 
eight defensive rebounds for us. He got five defensive rebounds today. He defends extremely well. Um, two steals again today. You know what I mean? Uh, we need him offensively to be better. And I think he, he kind of broke out of it a little bit uh, this afternoon or this evening, which was good. Coach, you limited UConn to 10 second half rebounds. Uh, can you talk about your team's effort on the glass? Yeah, just the, the physicality that we played with, the fact that we, you know, uh, we went after every missed shot. Um, I think it speaks volumes for how we want to play. We don't always look pretty at times, but we are physical and we're tough. We had guard rebounds. As I said, I mentioned David with his, but, uh, you know, Justin gets three defensive rebounds. LaQuincy gets five defensive rebounds. We got guys that aren't afraid to put their nose in there a little bit and mix it up. You know, we're, we're bigger, stronger, more physical, and we got some, we got some toughness. I said, you know, one of the, we're going to build our program on, on toughness and some grit, and, and at least we're in the opening stages of that, and I thought you saw some of that tonight. You hit some free throws down the stretch after a very miserable first half. To that final stretch, I think it was seven of eight. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, our, our thing is to get to the free throw line. Mm -hmm. I, I should have, you know, before the year, it was to shoot five or more free, five or more free throws per game than our opponent. All right. Um, I should have mentioned something about making them, because <laughs> our guys kind of listened to me, but I, I, I screwed that one up, but. You know, we got to line 47 times, they got to line 32. Now, do we need to shoot better from the free throw line? Yes, we, we do. Um, and, and we just got to keep working on it. We got to keep working on it, you know. And, and yeah, the first half, I think we had missed, we were down eight, we missed nine free throws. Probably one or two of those at the front end of a one on one, right? Um, we were a little bit out of sorts on offense. Sometimes that carries over to the free throw line. But like you said, David makes a couple free throws, and now he kind of gets back in rhythm offensively. So, um, we're, believe, I, can, I can promise you, though, the guys are working on him. You know, so. There, there's still obviously a ton of basketball to play, but what do you think this game just says about your program right now at this point? Well, it's, it, it shows that we're making progress. You know, it shows that um, the, the core values of our program in terms of bringing in high quality guys that play their butt off take pride when they put on that uniform, understand that there were some guys that have played here that have had great success and played that way. Our best teams here have always been tough teams, every single one of them. Um, and, and we understand that that's our, that's our formula. They also understand you have 18 opportunities, and every one is separate. This win does not give us any advantage going into Saturday's game. Our most important thing is tomorrow's practice. We need to get better. We got to get better every single day, every single day. And our guys have embraced that. And I think one of the things that they've embraced is the fact that we talk about it individually, every bit as much as collectively. My goal, my my, is, is to get these guys to be the best player that they can be, not just to plan the best team. It, it's their self-interest has to be involved in that. And I think our guys have really bought into that. And. Uh, we won this game on Monday and Tuesday with our practice, our extra work, our preparation. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. They have bought into that. Guys shooting extra, coming in in the morning, all those different things. Um, the challenge is now everybody pat them on the back. We've got to stay humble. Humility is a challenge in this day and age. And we also have to stay with that work ethic. Even if things don't go well, would we do the same thing tomorrow if we, if we had lost this game? We're not there yet because we don't know yet. But that's when you know you have a great program, when those things are consistent irregardless of the results. And, and we're going to be good. We're, we're, we're going to build a great program here. And this is just you know another, as we've talked about, kind of a mile marker. It was important for us to play well tonight. And I thought our guys responded. Did you, you, went, you went man, you started man. Yeah. You zoned about halfway through the yeah. first half. Looks like you were struggling to protect the rim. Is that something you're going to have to do more in conference play? Well, I, I thought the zone changed the tempo a little bit, kept us kind of within striking distance, to be honest with you. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're long, active. We gave up maybe one back cut on the, against the zone. But, yeah, we, we did it against FDU the other night when we couldn't guard them at all. 
and it got them out of rhythm. They didn't make a basket against our man-to-man -man at all after we went zone. Sometimes it's not that the zone stops you. Sometimes it just gets the team out of rhythm a little bit. I thought it was effective tonight. I hate the zone. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I'm not dumb enough to, to, to not use it if we can be effective in it. And, you know, um, I, I, I think we got, some, we got guys on the staff that can really teach it. I'm buying into it a little bit more, and, and I think we have some lineups that it, 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 fits, it fits well, and, and I'm not afraid to use it. And I think it's been, every time we've used it this year, it's been effective for us. Coming back to the, to the work ethic that you mentioned before that, do you think it's a little bit easier to kind of instill that in, in a younger team? Uh, you, you know, yeah. Mm, I mean, our freshmen are off the chart when it comes to their work ethic. Um, a little bit, you know, I, I, I think you need to have your, your leaders uh, be putting in that time, though, too, because, you know, if your best players are doing it, it's a lot easier to get everybody else to do it, you know. Um, but we've, we, you know, this, we're not there yet, you know, because guys are never going to do enough for, for me. Um, but that's why they came here. You know, that's why they came here, because they know that, that we're going to keep pushing them to, to become their very become their very best. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes it easier when you got guys that want to be great. You know, because they can say, hey, you know, we talk about being a professional. You can't. If you're going to say it, then let's let's do it. You know, this is where you want to go. Then let's. This is what you need to do. And if they buy into it, which our guys have, and there's ebbs and flows with that. You know, they're 18 to 22. You know, uh, but for the most part, when when we step on that court, we come we we compete. And you do that because that becomes a habit. And I think we're starting to develop that. Catherine, how's it going?